Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Your, your Excellencies, let me first of all apologize for the entire dignitary and the organizers for arriving a little late. Due to the need, my excuse is that I respond with my friends to the call to prayers. And as Almighty Allah, who made it a very important portion of our prayer, he denounced Rantal Mustaqim. It is necessary for me to have that courage and the guidance for a crowd of this nature, from the smallest to the oldest. Your Excellency, the Governor of Plateau State and the Director General of our Presidential Campaign Council. Simon Bakola Long. Thank you. The national chairman of our party, the APC party, who is ably represented by Senator Abubakar Kerry, the deputy national chairman. His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir Erufai. <laughs> Let me at this stage correct some people who didn't understand idioms as synonyms. I say, Madam Nasir, turn a rotten situation to a bad one. It's an achievement. Something you gave up on, rotting beyond salvation. And you now say, ah, there's life, is bad. Before we came in, we thought, here yeah, is a forest of killers. But ever since, he has reduced that unmanageable situation, that rotting situation, to a livable environment and chase worse people. What are we looking for? Progress to turn it from bad to good, to build on it, to become the best. That is why the first phrase 
in our constitution started with we the people. We are encouraging you, Nancy, to keep on the good job and we be with you with the prayer. Help me tell them you understand better English in colloquial manner. His Excellency, the Chairman of the Progressive Governor, the Governor of Kebi, Abu Bakr Atiku Bagudu, the Excellency, the Governor of Jigawa State, Mohammed Badaru Abu Bakr, the Excellency, the Governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullahi Sule. The Excellency Governor of Kasina State, Aminu Belu Masari. My running mate is has arrived. I could see him up there. Welcome. Thank you for the job you are doing. And thank you that you is a great, great more to salvage the country. I could see many of you could see Adam Oshio Mole and all of you. Take it that I recognize you. I respect you all. Adiza, who worked diligently with me for today to come, thank you very, very much, Adiza. The representative of the governor of Kogi and others are here. All former governors are here. Distinguished senators, Members of the House of Representatives, elder statesmen, and the organizers of today, some gossipers have tried to blackmail you, our inducers, not to attend because you predetermined your endorsement. We say, so what? The best job a confidence group should do is to go ahead to convince people of the promise of today for a better tomorrow. And we are here. The leaders of our work consultative forum, Sir Amadou Belo Memorial Foundation, Arewa House, Arewa Research and Development Project, Jamia Shumai Macham Arewa, Northern Elders Forum, members of the fourth, fourth estate of the realm. Distinguished ladies and ge gentlemen, I am proud to be here. I could see the omission of Sampara State Governor. Yes, that one is my son. Belo Motawali. And Governor of Yobe. Thank you. If I miss you, it's not intentional. This is not about protocol. This is about nation building. And this is my remark. 
I begin with by commending you, the organizer, of this suspicious, auspicious event for bringing me back to Arewa House. I'm not a, a new person here. I've been here for several engagements like this. Now that it is time to focus on various activities you've done in the past and focus on advising the interests of this country and its people, our people, through dialogue and exchange of ideas. As I said, during the time I chaired the Sadana Memorial Lecture last year, I have a solemn feeling of responsibility and duty to our country every time I am here. Standing here evokes the memories of great leaders and fathers of this nation the late Sir Amandu Belo, the late Salahona of Sokoto. The contribution of Sadana to this nation building remain a reference point for us all. He was a visionary builder of men and institution. The dream of Sadana, even though cut short, See, indeed, the death of our other great leaders, such as Chief Obafemi Awolowo, Dr. Namdi Asikwe, and our first and only Prime Minister, Sir Abubakar Kapa Malewa. Their dream was to warn indivisible and prosperous nation be built on the sheer value of patriotism, equity, justice, and brotherhood. Somebody was trying to sell you short. I disagree. If you started your campaign from Uyo, and you come before this audience, and you say you are the only Northerner, you've lost the election. It is therefore no coincidence that at independence, this is the vision of our leaders. It's accomplished well in our first national anthem. And I can walk through some part of it, which quotes, though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. This is a strong statement which acknowledges our diversity and therefore assistance of different perspectives and interests. And how that should not stand on the path of progress, unity, and brotherhood. On the path people of a united Nigeria, unbreakable. The famous of this anthem, may God raise their souls. We cringe to know that since two years after, someone will come to this hollow platform to campaign on the basis of tribe 
or where others come from. I'm one of you. Yes, I have no control that I'm a Yoruba boy. I'm a city boy from Lagos. <laughs> but the joy of it all is the fact I didn't choose myself. I didn't choose to come. I apply to come. I joined a congress with great minds backing me. The Northern Governors Forum said, oh, power is truly not served a la carte. Let's support a Southerner, no matter who he is. And they made that promise. They made it stick. They stand on it firmly. And it's, that is how I emerged. I beat them silly. They are all, yeah. Whatever name you call them, they are here. They are great people. They brought me here. They are standing with me. They know I can do the job. They improve my confidence. <laughs> to come back to our vital topics of the day. Why do you want to run? Or why are you running? Or what are you running for or from? I'm running for uncertainties. From wastages. I am here. Recognizing the supremacy of security. Placing security as the first and only first item for life and properties. If you give me the mandate my administration will give it all the attention necessary to consolidate on the recent investment on, in our security already being done by the President, Muhammadu Buhari. I promise you, Anything I say here yeah, on that, we show you that I am a promise keeper. Go back to my track record. I don't fight my leader in the public. Some leaders have done it before, abuse each other in public insult each other, waste our program, dash our dream, and we are back to Sukwa One. As you are aware, security is the foundation of resources. I am committed to mobilizing all assets within our national power to secure Nigeria. We did this in Lagos through many initiatives, especially the Security Trust Fund. Though we address many needs of our country, the forces which help to sanitize Lagos 
are in Lagos in conjunction with the federal government. When I assumed office in 1999, the situation I met was basically a case of banditry where a bank gang ruled the streets. I returned the, con the states to a state of law and order and rule of law. The state is still there. And uh, one of the candidates <laughs> running against me lives in Lagos. That's Peter Obi. <laughs> if you ask Katiku, where is your other valuable asset? He, say, he will say he has one on McDonald Street, Lagos. back on focus because I've been warned to stay on script. <laughs> we will address the welfare and training needs of our security personnel. Strengthen our security institutions with modern technology, necessary equipment to better position them to respond to modern challenges that we face in a fast-changing world. Under my leadership, the Nigerian military will receive much needed injection of training personnel to strengthen the heroic effort of the troops. And we will reinforce them. with best technological equipment. They are available. We are short in numbers. The ragtag bandits will not defeat us. We will defeat them. We will eliminate them. I can assure you, no inch, no inch of this country boundary will be yielded to ragtag bandits. Your anxiety, as I stand before you, is shared by me. And that anxiety will evaporate as soon as you elect me the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> I'm aware of the recent resolution of Northern governors and traditional rulers on the issue of state police. However, it is pertinent to note that the issue of state police, just like the larger debate around it, restructuring is a constitutional matter that requires consensus building. I must say here that restructuring means different things to different people. That's why those who understand, who didn't understand the many of restructuring did not even follow up on a, a very good job done by El Rufai on this. Madam Nancy El Rufai, I thank you for that job. If nobody did. But it should be noted that my aspiration to lead the country is a testimonial for my strong belief in the unity and indivisibility of Nigeria as a country. This, however, 
are matters that require consultation with critical stakeholders, which include the Council of State, legislatures, judiciary, state government, traditional institutions, and groups like yours before we do. All opinions to help us arrive at a definite stand that will be in the interest of the country. We will mobilize resources to enhance the welfare of personnel and provide the right equipment and training required for them to secure us all. We will sustain ongoing efforts of increasing the boots on the ground, commensurate to our geography and population. This recruitment will be tailored to suit the need for specific, specific cadre and expertise for each organ of the security architecture. What I can guarantee you is that throughout this period, and I stand before here, I'm making you, making you a promise that will be fulfilled. For us, we are sitting on a gold mine with abundant natural resources, with strategic investment in research and development, and effective management of resources, we will exploit and exploit our resources to the fullest. There is no local government in this country where there is no resource on an, or endowment that can be harnessed for greater economic development. If it is only cassava self, there are so many extractions and economic opportunity that we can bring out of a cassava tuba. Our major economic challenges are under investment, the ineffective management, and this is what I am bringing to the table. A good experience can do attitude, thinking, and doing it. Our economic plans. We utilize the fast natural resources we have through strategic investment in infrastructure, which is, will lead to the diversification of economy and wealth creation across the country. We will, <coughs> we will pay attention to modern economic drivers such as digital economy, creative industry, sport, entertainment, all sectors for the benefit of our young people. The APC federal government has taken several measures to build infrastructure and improve on ease of doing business. This has been completed by effort of some of our states. They are working to attract investment in diverse sectors of the economy. They will be encouraged by my, by my, by the federal government. Under my leadership, Nigerian government will be business friendly, 
We shall support private businesses in our country and extract foreign direct investment to create jobs, accelerated industrialization, and accelerated economic development. It is the duty of federal government to create incentive and support successful ventures that we absorb our millions of youths on power sector. Power, which is perhaps the greatest invention of man and humanity in the last 1,000 years. Power is essential for human activi activities. There can be no industrial revolution without power. I hope we get that one right. I will prioritize strengthening of our existing power reforms as a catalyst to sustain industrialization. Aside the ongoing power intervention of federal government, I know that 19 northern states and FCT have incorporated a special purpose vehicle to build 100 megawatts of solar project per state to complement the power generation across this country. These are kinds, the kind of initiatives I will encourage and support to revamp industrialization. You just don't forget available infrastructure in Nigeria. These special vehicle purposes talk of 100 megawatt of solar project per state to complement others. I will encourage and support them and bring the new one so that we can revamp, revamp our industrialization. We will accelerate the completion of Mambila Hydro Power Project, explore and construct other sources of power in line with global best practices. You have in your mind, maybe you will ask me the question, what happened to Songeru, Kaduna River? 950 megawatts. Lokoja, Niger River, 200 megawatts. Makodi, Benue River, in Hydro, can provide 1,000 megawatts. We are not going to forget all of that. I just give you three examples. Industrialization. Adding value is my forte. Using my experience of building human capital, industries, and institutions, which has led Lagos to be one of largest economies on the continent today, I will reposition our existing industries and make them a competitive source of industrialization and growth, not just for the North, but for the entire country. It is time to fetch water from a dry well. Don't be afraid. 
the help is here, standing before you. I, Bola Amechinobu, I've done it before. I will do it again. We will find a way where there is no road. We will support you. We will be the Nigeria of your dream in your lifetime. It is a promise that you can depend on. I will ensure that we take advantage of our resources to convert cotton to textile, plant to pharmaceutical products, granite to edible oil, cassava to ethanol, the starch and many other variables. We are talking of uh, Dangote Refinery and other refineries in Nigeria. <laughs> you have not asked the question, why is Nigeria not the capital plastic capital of Africa when there are so much byproduct from refineries why are we not leading other nations we find excuses upon excuses no more. That is acceptable. No more. Agriculture and food security. In experience, in the last seven years, we have shown potential of agriculture in solving the problem of unemployment, boosting our GDP. For example, Recent investment in rice value chain has led to the spring up of several rice mills across the country with attendant wealth creation and reduction in uh, import bill. The North has a great advantage in this regard. So large, it's a large and abundant arable land. My vision for the region is to make it the hub of a Greek business in sub-Sahara Africa. We will improve investment in our livestock value chain, specifically subsectors like dairy industry that has potential of adding billions of dollars into our economy that will receive significant attendance. In collaboration with the private sector and the state government, I will do my best and make a heavy investment in post-harvest storage and processing facilities. We can significantly increase the value of what we produce to ensure optimizing the full value of their produce. We will utilize commodity exchange guaranteed return on investment to encourage farmers. Farmers are reaping some benefits from the program, anchor borrowers and all of that now. But we will do more, encourage more, 
with guaranteed prices by the Commodity Exchange Board and investment. We will make available funds for research and development. Those academic, academicians, you are here. Sharp your tooth, bring your research and discoveries forward. Let's make it in Nigeria. Solid minerals. There is a lot of wealth beneath the land of numerous northern states, like in many other Nigerian states, from gold in Sampara to lithium in Nasarawa, nickel in Kaduna, and iron ore in Kogi, among others. We are not yet utilizing the full potential of these items. Mr. Coordinator, give me time to finish my paper <laughs> before we fight. My administration we continue to explore and invest in oil and gas opportunities that exist in Benway through the Chad Basin and other prospective locations. We will also ensure the competition and the completion of the ongoing AKK project and Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline. Why are we not investing, raising long-term funds in that pipeline that will lead our gas, LNG, to Europe and compete with the Russians and say we don't have enough revenue? You invest money to make money. We will do it. We will change the trend. We know how. We know how to do it. Don't listen to the group of cannot. We don't fail before the exam starts. The question of the out-of-school children. Millions of our children are currently roaming the street instead of being in the classroom. Unfortunately, majority of these children are in the north. This is unacceptable. I will work hard to turn around these statistics. My administration will invest heavily in infrastructure to allow for proper integration, partnership with developmental partners to provide alternative access to education and vocational to this particular demographic. I am aware that already federal government has secured funding from our developmental partner, development partners to support states to address the problem through the following initiatives. BESDA, funded by World Bank with $600 million. Bilingual education, bilingual education, funded by Islamic Development Bank with $100 million. Out of school children, jointly funded by World Bank, UNICEF, and Islamic Development Bank with $500 million.
Agile Fund, funded by the World Bank with $750 million. These initiatives amount to $2.2 billion of funding secured by the current APC government to assist the comprehensive solution to the problem of our out-of-school children. There is another basket of UBEC. The fund amounts to 160 billion available to support basic education across the country. We, we encourage the out-of-school children. We will give them incentive, including feeding. There is nothing wrong if we employ the elementary teachers and allocate four hours to them, or one hour, say, okay, bring those children to the class. We will allow you from one hour to four hours to give them Quranic education if that is what you want. But let them learn Western education as well. It's a lal, not a ram. There are an, another topic that I've to address. That is the tackling corruption. Corruption is hydra-headed challenge to us, but we will fight it. Not just fighting by pe putting people in jail only. Let us look at the causes and the problem of corruption too. I disagree with so many of our bankers not given incentive to credit borrowing. You want to buy a house? They say eight million. You want eight million at a go? How are we not still? And I need a house. If you establish mortgage and secondary mortgage and trade in that instrument. You can pay 150 million for the next 25 years. You remove the incentive from stealing. You need a car. You go to the car seller. You want a car of 4 million or 5 million naira. He wants you to pay cash. The best favor he could do to you is to pay two times. Are you not going to invest your money in the class or in the civil service if you have to pay five million cash for that car? Whereas, if there's credit assurance industry that has created so many jobs and opportunities for others, maybe you have car notes of 100 naira only. So you don't, you don't bother to steal. You don't bother about corruption. You won't. You'll be satisfied. We must change the method, change the strategy in order to make corruption free society. Drawing inspiration from General Yakubu Gowon, that keeping Nigeria warm is a task that must be done. I assure Nigeria from different backgrounds, our tribe and tongues may devour, but we will not break up this country. 
My political history is full of examples. Whereas, abiding support for the North, from let's say we are at work, I'm standing before you saying this. Uh, it's okay. I'm standing before you saying this. Even my greatest rival today met me with Yaradwa. At Abubakar. Met me with Yaradwa. I was one of the youngest, brilliant strategists of late Shea Weadra. He was just out of cost of that time. Ask him to go and read the civil service regulation. They asked him questions. How did you make money? He said from selling cars. Can you as a civil servant involve in other trades and businesses? You have attracted disqualification you don't desire to compete with others. <laughs> Drawing inspiration, I've said that. My political history is full of examples of long abiding support for the North. No Ribadu was on our platform. I've supported that in 207. Then don't blame me if I ask for the payback period. It's way back. Let him endorse me now. Instead of conducting rally around Kaduna, why I'm talking to great people here. So it's credit. The North is paying back in good measure. I am the flag bearer of our party today, partly because of the decision of the North, Northern APC governors. Who rose to the occasion by standing up for our country and unity of our people against primordial consideration? I thank them again and again. By so doing, they have de demonstrated that indeed the North is a region that keeps its word and always promotes justice. Not only Quranic teaching, permit me to reinstate that I have the competence the knowledge, experience, to provide good leadership to the country and run it very well. I come to seek your confidence in me. I am not an island. However, I have demonstrated the capacity to attract men and women of great minds who can think and perform, who can build a nation. I can make reference to Go Atlantic in Lagos now. It's the one of the most audacious projects that this man will embark on. 
federal government year after year had pumped sand and some stone concrete and to, to stop the surge. My uncles, they will take black cows and, and pigs to the river that the spirit wants something. It's a lie. Science defeated it all. I made it possible. With the support of Almighty God, you will want to live there. You will say and marvel if you go to Lagos, what is a co Atlantic? That's the audacious bold endeavors that I can embark upon. Just leave me to express my inspiration. Support me. To drive my imagination. Vote for me to become that minority president Bola Hamed Tinobu, Yagaba Bogu.